Hello and welcome to this tips and techniques video from Master Your Photography. In this series we've carefully crafted a collection of short videos designed to provide you with key points on specific topics without any of the unnecessary waffle. Our goal is to give you practical information that you can immediately apply to your own photography. We understand that your time is precious so we've condensed each video to deliver concise actionable information. With our tips and techniques series, you'll gain the knowledge and the confidence to improve your photography in no time at all. So that's probably enough waffle, let's get started. In this very quick video, I want to give you an overview of something called HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range. Now, a HDR image is something that you can use when you're faced with a scene that has very high contrast. So it has some very bright areas and some very dark areas. You see, the problem is your eyes are really wonderful at adapting to scenes like this and your brain interprets the, uh, the overall scene as being quite well balanced, but the camera can't do that. And so what you end up with is overexposed highlights or shadow areas that have no detail at all. This is where creating a HDR image can really help. If we look at this example of an image that is basically overexposed in the highlight areas, the reason being that the exposure has been set on the camera so that the, uh, the foreground area, where the blue of the swimming pool is, has been correctly exposed. Now, this has resulted in what we call burnout on the windows and the highlight areas. If we change our exposure so that those areas are actually exposed correctly, then you can see what happens to the deep shadow areas. They just go so dark that you can't see any detail at all. So this is where a HDR image can help us. If we shoot another image in the middle of those two, for the mid-tones as well, what we can do is then combine those three images to create what is called a HDR image. And this has got a nice balance of exposures from the highlights right through to the shadow areas and enables the camera to be able to see the image as we do with our eyes. This technique can be used in lots of situations. Landscapes where there's a high contrast range between say the sky and the, um, the actual land. Sunrises and sunsets where you get a high contrast between the brightness of the, the sun either setting or, or rising and again the landscape in the foreground. Any kind of backlit subject or interior photographs as well. In fact, any situation where you're faced with really high contrast, that's the difference between the brightest areas of your image, the highlights, and the darkest areas of your image, the shadows you should usually be shooting at least three images but there's no reason why you can't shoot a lot more depending on the situation. The important thing is to make sure you have an image that's correctly exposed for each area of the scene that you're photographing. So that's the highlights, the mid-tones and the shadow areas. It's always best to have more images than not enough so if you end up with lots it doesn't matter because you don't have to use them all at the post-production stage when you combine them together. If your camera has automatic exposure bracketing, which is sometimes referred to as AEB, then you should use that because that will um, allow you to shoot these pictures very quickly at different exposures and your camera will work out the different settings for you automatically. It's best to use either manual or aperture priority mode and make sure your camera is locked down on a tripod if you can. I've said this in the past, if you can shoot raw files, you will have a lot more information to then play with at the post-production stage. So in this situation where you're really trying to maximize the information in a scene, it really does make sense to shoot raw files if you can. Once you've got your individual images, you're going to have to merge them together using some kind of post-production software. Now, the obvious two are Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop, but there are some dedicated HDR packages out there too. I won't go into specifics in this video, that can be a subject for a future in-depth tutorial because it is very specific to each software package as well. The important thing is to make sure you've captured the individual images first because then you can feed them into various software packages and see which one gives you the result that you prefer. 
If you're a smartphone user, then you may find that your phone is actually creating HDR images automatically for you. iPhones in particular, certainly the latest versions, automatically shoot HDR images and then merge them together in the background without you even knowing about it. This is quite often why an image of a scene shot on an iPhone will look better than an image shot on what I would call a proper camera because it's actually shooting several images and merging them to create that, that HDR final result. But this is why smartphone images quite often do look really, really good in high contrast situations. If you are a smartphone user, have a look at the settings on your particular model and uh, look for HDR on the menus and sometimes it's something that you can switch on or off depending on whether you want that kind of result. So next time you are faced with a high contrast scene, make sure you get your camera locked down on a tripod, shoot a sequence of images so that you've got an exposure for highlights, midtones and shadows, and then have a play around with creating a HDR image. If you found these tips useful, then please comment below. And if you'd like more tips like this, then please hit the subscribe button and then you'll be kept informed when we release new videos. Thank you for tuning in to Master Your Photography's Tips and Techniques series. We hope you found this video useful and practical. Remember, each photo you take is a stepping stone towards becoming a better photographer. So get out there and capture the world in your own unique way. Until next time, happy shooting. Thank you.